In the previous video, I mentioned I'd show you why the order of matrix multiplication is important. Remember, we had to put the rotation on the right, translation in the middle, and projection, the perspective projection, on the left. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate quickly but succinctly why that's important. This tool that I have in front of me, I have two, mat two matrices here, and what my tool does is multiply these two matrices together to produce this matrix. And as far as these matrices are concerned, you need not worry about the numbers inside. I know I've mentioned it a billion times, but you can go watch the Game Engine Programming Playlist if you want to really learn the linear algebra behind the vectors and translations. But all you need to worry about is that these matrices are black boxes. I can combine matrices together using matrix multiplication. You need not even worry about what matrix multiplication does. If you don't want to stress that, but I can combine these two matrices into a single matrix, and the result will be this matrix on the right, which again is a black box, but my app down here uses this matrix, this resulting matrix on the right, to perform some transformations on the sphere in the middle. It's kind of fun to scribble all over my screen. Anyway, what I can do here is select a matrix, and I can change various values with these sliders. For example, I'm scaling on the Y, so that changes the shape there or I can go over here and say well let's rotate around the Z rotate around the Z we can rotate around the Y so on and so forth so anyway I can select these matrices and set different values in them and my program will automatically multiply them combine them into here and apply that matrix to the sphere in the screen so in the previous video we did the rotation matrix first this this will be our rotation matrix and I'll do a multiplication symbol here. We applied that to each one of the vertices individually in the vertex shader. And then after we hit the vertex with the rotation matrix, we hit it with the translation matrix. So I'm going to come over here and change our translation matrix. I believe we went to negative 3 on the Z, so that moves the sphere out here. Let's see if I can move our view a little bit more. Okay, so our sphere is now out in the negative 3. And then let's go here with the rotation. And I believe we rotated around the X, if I remember. So rotate, 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 rotate. In this tool, I'm actually using radians. I decided I got tired of degrees. I think degrees are just uh, frustrating. Some English dude created that, and that's just messed up. Pi is so beautiful. I'm using radians. doesn't really matter. Rotate that sphere. Rotate that sphere. You notice that sphere is rotating around its x-axis quite nicely. Let's actually switch the y-axis because I think this demo will demonstrate a little bit. It'll hit home a little more if we do the y-axis. So notice we're rotating around the y-axis. No surprises. Okay. Notice the sphere is not moving. It's just out there rotating away. Okay. What I'm going to do now is swap the translation and the rotation. I'm going to put the ro translation over here and the rotation over there. So let me erase this and let me actually change the values in each matrix to zero. So I'll slide that to zero, select this one and slide that to zero. And then this will be our new translation matrix. This is the translation matrix. And so we need to set the translate Z to negative three again. So negative three, all is well, all is good. And now let's turn this into our rotation matrix. And then go back here and say, let's rotate around the Y. And now watch what happens. Woo! See that? Woo! <laughs> it's like a ride. Okay, what's what's the difference between, difference between this and what we were doing before? Well, if you recall what we were doing before, the sphere was moving around its Y axis. Okay, the Y axis is coming directly out. Before, the sphere was just kind of going around the Y axis. But now that I'm applying the translation... Before doing the rotation, the sphere is still rotating around a y-axis. Rotate, rotate, rotate. But it's the y-axis that's at the origin of the world, so to say. The y-axis it's rotating around is actually centered right here. Let me draw the y-axis right there. And then let's rotate. You can see the sphere is going around that y-axis. Okay, and that's all because we did the translation first before we did the rotation. Okay, let's actually step through this slowly. In fact, I'm going to go back to having the rotation on the right. All right, rotation will be on the right. Translation 
will be on the left. And let's, let's see, that's zeroed out. Let's zero this one out. And then trans rotation. Okay, so this is why the order is important. First thing we're going to hit this vertex with is a rotate. Okay, so I'm going to say rotate around the Y. I notice the sphere is actually rotating around the Y axis that I had there, right there in the center of the world, because I haven't moved the sphere yet. There's a Y axis directly out of the center of the world that happens to be aligned with the Y axis of the sphere. And so when I say rotate, the sphere is rotating around the Y axis of the world. And then once we got the rotation that we want, then we're going to come around and say, okay, we're, we, we turned it. Uh oh, I'm moving my camera there, but we turn the sphere. Let's push the sphere out into the world. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I can come back to this matrix and say, well, turn it, turn it, turn it. But what I'm really saying is turn it and then put it out into the world. Okay, the, the turning is actually happening, even though we can't see it in this case, but I can move the sphere back to where it was. The turning is actually happening right around the origin of the world, which is lined up with the origin of the sphere. Okay, now in the other case, let's do the other case. I'm going to erase this and erase this, and we'll put the rotation second and the translation first. Let me change the values back here. And we're all identity matrix, good. So now we're going to say, okay, instead of rotating the sphere first, let's translate the sphere out into the world. Let's move the sphere out into the world, negative 3 on the Z. And now that it's out there, let's rotate it around the Y. Okay, and certainly it's rotating around the Y. It's the exact same rotation around the Y that, it, that the sphere did when it was sitting in the middle of the world, except now we kind of put it out on the end and we're rotating after we do the translation. So that's why the order is so important, going back to our code. You can say here, do the rotation, then do the translation, then do the perspective. I think when we had this code a little less optimized, it was easier to see. We had the perspective projection, and then we multiplied that to the translation matrix, and then we multiplied that against the rotation matrix. But the order that these matrices will actually hit our vertex is rotation first, translation next, then projection. Even though it looks like it's left to right, let's hit it with projection first, translation, rotation. With OpenGL in the math library we're using, it's actually rotation, then translation, then projection, all hitting this vector. So there you go. That's why the order of matrix multiplication is important. Again, I strongly suggest hitting the game engine playlist, going through all the vector math, learn what these matrices are doing and how they're doing it. But you don't need to. I mean, we're going to do plenty of cool things without understanding all the nitty-gritty details about the matrices.